My dad was a blue collar worker, and he actually worked and fight. And, but he was also he was also uh, a lover, and he also uh, every night uh, would uh, pray to God and ask for forgiveness. So he's a man of faith, and so um, and oftentimes my mom uh, was referred to as Saint Joan because she was a person who had to deal with that, and um, she was amazing. She what I what I say is she gave us a moral compass, and she taught us about perseverance and. Um, can, loving unconditionally, and I know a lot of people think, "Wow, well, you know, my mom is the most special mom." But you know, I, I, I always, I really do think my mom was a special person. <laughs> and um, my parents gave us lots of freedom, and we had lots of freedom until we screwed up. And so it, I never was grounded once in my life, but I knew that I had high expectations. I wasn't allowed to. I, I, I had to make good choices, and I had to make sure that. Um, I was going to be well educated and making sure that I was doing my very best. Um, as I, I, we did grow up Catholic. I went to Catholic elementary school and Catholic high school. I was not great at sports. Um, and actually I wasn't really the most motivated learner. I was someone who kind of, I was, I was learning out of compliance. As I said, as if I didn't work hard on getting good grades, then I was going to have to have the wrath of my, my dad. And so um, my three older siblings were college graduates and um, they graduated way before I did because we were the, the little guys growing up. And um, so one thing I could do really well was I was an artist and a lot of people don't know this about me but I love to draw and I could do technical drawing and design and so I thought my senior year that that's where I was going to go. I was going to be an architect. And I was, um, I thought this is something that was going to really, uh, that was going to be something that I could do. And then the other thing that was really important was that I thought it might make money. Because that was one of the things that my, my parent, my dad especially, really wanted us to do something that was going to make us more successful. So I thought I was on my little trajectory. And, and when I was in high school, my senior year, I was, we had to do service hours. And my service hours were uh, working at an elementary school that was in the neighborhood. And I had to go there two days a week and work with the elementary age students. It was a second grade and a third grade. And it was in that experience where I was, it, I had this kind of epiphany that I, I don't want to be an architect. This is, I want to be in a classroom. I want to be a teacher. And it's not that, it's that moment when you are thinking, Wow, it's like, gosh, this is the best. I, I know what I'm doing. I know my path. And so I can remember just being very excited about sharing this and sharing with this with my family and having family members who are like, no. No, that's not, no. And I had even family members who said things like, um, you know, you'll never have any money. No one's, no one's going to want to be with you. That's a woman's job. And I can remember feeling so defeated, thinking that this thing that I was so excited about was now kind of um, not a reality. So graduate high school, and I started as an architect major. I, I decided that I was going to start two years and do a go to UMSL to uh, get some of those things, those prerequisites finished. And my ultimate goal was to go to KU and try to get into that program. And I loved learning and I loved being able to um, go to the classes and I did learn a lot. And also during that time, I worked all the time because the only way that I was gonna be able to go away to school is if I paid for it. So I was spending, I was spending a lot of time working, going to school, and um, I will tell you that after one year, I, I was just really not motivated. And so I, my, first, my first piece of advice or first piece of wisdom to you is this. Taking risks leads you to new paths and allows you to realize aspects of, your, of yourself that you, uh, you did not know. So um, after that first year of college, my best friend, his name was Scott, he had gone to Arizona State his first year, and he came back from college, and he decided not to go back. 
And so he was going to go to UMSL just like I was, and he was like, i got to figure my life out. So he was working all the time. We were both working. And Scott was like, you know what, Sean? We should quit our jobs and quit school and just go to Europe and figure it out. So at that point in my life, I had been to the Ozarks. And I had been to <laughs> Chicago on a church trip, but that was like the extent of my, my travel experience. And so, um, you know, it was so fun to be able to talk to him and we, we would like, we would write to the travel, we didn't have cell phones or internet or anything, so we'd write to travel agents and get brochures. And, and what was interesting is that we kept on getting, we would just have these kind of conversations about what it would be like, or where would you, where would we start? Nothing was ever gonna come to fruition of it. And um, so as we continue to look at some of these, uh, the brochures and, the, uh, and, and just doing research, we looked at um, youth hostels. And, and so all of a sudden we're like, is this something that we really could do? And so we didn't tell anybody that we were doing this, um, but we did. We actually bought a one-way ticket to London. And uh, I took the money that was from college. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell anybody. We, it, was up not, it was about a week before I left that I was saying, I'm not going back to school this semester. I'm actually leaving to go to London, and I don't know when I'm going to be back. And so it was, I took, so Scott and I decided that we were going to take this adventure, and that's what we did. And we landed there, and we were like, scared to death. We had no idea what we were going to do. We got off this plane. It was the first time I'd ever been on a plane and, um, and got there. And what it was is I was so used to having people tell me what I should be doing and telling me how I should, uh, you know, what direction I should go in my life. And it was the time that I had to figure it out myself. I was, you know, we didn't know one person there. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, and so we just figured it out. And so we uh, we're able, and there's no cell phones or anybody that you have to call, no MapQuest. And so we um, had our little book and, and we figured it out. And so we traveled three months and just went to 14 different countries as we, throughout Europe and just went around and, and met new people, had great connections with, uh, with um, the, the culture and was able to experience things or, that, I've only saw, that I've only seen in books. And it was this, this most life-changing um, experience. Um, it gave me a true sense of efficacy because I had to figure things out and make it feel like I was capable of doing this. But I was gonna just share one moment that happened during that um, trip, is that we decided we were gonna go to Greece and, we decide, and while we were there, we, we thought, oh, here's the other thing that we did that I didn't share with you, is that this is how naive we were. We took all of our money and we just carried cash in our pockets. And that's how we did it. We didn't have ATM cards, we didn't have, and that's how we, we had fanny, fanny bags actually, which were, we were real stylish. Um, but the, but uh, when we went to Greece, we thought, well, if we had sleeping bags, we wouldn't have to pay for a, a youth hostel that night, so we could just sleep on the beach. And so we bought, we invested in sleeping bags while we were there, and we thought we would be able to sleep on the beach, and then we wouldn't have to pay for a place to stay. And I, I was just thinking to myself, gosh, you know, first of all, my parents would kill me if they knew that I was doing this, but it's okay. I, um, and there was the night, there was one night I was just laying there, here at the ocean, and I was thinking, I'm in Greece, in the middle of nowhere, on a beach, just enjoying my life. And, think, and what I did was, it was at that moment where I was thinking, I can go back and do anything I want. I got to this point, and I can go back and do whatever I want. And so, I, um, at that moment, it was kind of towards the middle of our trip, it was kind of this reassurance that I can go back and I didn't have to worry about what people were thinking. I didn't want somebody else to define what my life was going to be back. I was going to be, I was going to go back and I was going to be a teacher. So, um, so I share this little slide with our teachers a lot and I wanted to share it with you. And it's this kind of circle of the different zones that are in your, in your, in your life. And a lot of times we're like, we want to be in our comfort zone and sometimes we want to step out of our comfort zone. And, what, what I've learned is that when we are in this zone of kind of this risk zone, 
and not so far, up, you know, not in the danger zone where we're, it's, 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 we're totally out of control, but really taking those kind of calculated risk, that's where you learn. And so I felt like I was in that risk zone. I mean, the sleeping in the, uh, the sleeping bag on the beach is a little bit of the danger zone, but, um, but that's where I was. And it was interesting. Uh, there's Scott. Grew my hair long during that time. And uh, we got back, and um, I enrolled in school, and Scott decided to join the Marines. And he actually got married soon after that. And um, so it's funny, it's just last year, went to his, old, his oldest daughter's wedding. And um, so it was, we we're still dear friends, but we had this experience, and I really appreciate that he was one uh, integral p person in my life to cause me to take risk. So what I, I shared with you too is that um, my the taking uh, don't let other learn from others, but don't let others choose your path or define who you should be in your life. I learned from my family and I learned from my friends, but I wasn't going to let them be the ones that are going to define who I was going to be and what I was going to do in life. So I went back uh, to UMSL. And I uh, loved every moment of my program. I, got, I loved what I was studying. I loved being in classrooms. I absolutely loved the experience that I had um, working with students. At that, at that time, too, I got a job at the Missouri Botanical Garden in their education department. So I was working in all the St. Louis City public schools and high schools. And just, I had this amazing experience. It's like you knew what you were, you knew what you were, what was, it was, what you were doing was right. Um, and then I had an opportunity to take a position at Webster Groves, and I had my own classroom, and um, that was Della. And um, so I was what I what I learned in being a teacher is that it's really important that we want our kids to know the curriculum and know the content, but more than anything, I wanted them just to be good people. And one of the lessons that I learned during that time was I had a principal, and I've shared this with the staff as well, who was so amazing in terms of his leadership and pushing people to think and uh, to grow. And I remember having some struggles with some students in class. And um, what I was doing was I went to him and I was telling him, you know what, I thought I was being a good teacher. And I was like, we need to get some additional help for the kids. Like, they need some help. Uh, and, and what he, was, what he said to me, he was like, you are the help. <laughs> and so what it was, is it really, and it, it was a moment that changed my teaching career. Because from that moment, I had a little uh, poster in my classroom that said, I am the help. And it reminded me that I always had to be the first person who was going to be responsible for the students in my classroom. And I was going to be the one that's going to be uh, helping with their trajectory. So, um, so during that time, when I had this, you know, and I, I went back to my dad. I told you my, my dad had, uh, re, he w worked seven days a week. He was really excited that I, after, when I came back, excited when I was, he eventually was very excited about my, the path I was taking. And um, I had to learn, I also learned something really important during that time from him. It's so important to live in the present and appreciate the now and the people around you. And I share that with you is because this is, he worked until he was retired. It's just a picture of him retiring, his retire, retirement party. And his whole life, he talked about, I'm gonna do this when I retire. I'm gonna do that when I retire. I'm never, you know, I can't wait till I can retire to do this. And he had this whole little list of what he was going to do. And soon after he retired, he found out he had cancer. So it was like he had, he, was, he wasn't, and I think he had some good times in his life, but he also, um, he kind of always waited until later. And what I learned from him is that, you know, you can't wait till later because you don't know how much time you have sometimes. And so um, what I thought, what was during that time during my first year he actually passed away during that time and I never he never got to see my classroom because he was too sick to come in and I was and I learned that you know he he worked really hard but he never really lived in that present he always was like he wanted to look ahead and say I'll do that later 
And I, and I ask you as, you, know, as you know, students, I want you to be thinking about how can I enjoy the now and finding those little glimpses of times when you can really enjoy the present moment. We're always so look, worried about what's next and we have to stop and just say, I'm gonna really just enjoy this moment. So um, being a person who tried to say, I'm gonna take a lot of different opportunities and try to live in the moment, I had a, an opportunity um, when I was a teacher that uh, during that time, during when, at the beginning of my career, summers used to start before Memorial Day and end after Labor Day. So they were a big chunk, they were a big chunk of time. And so I took a job being a, uh, a caretaker of a house in Seattle. And, and so I went and moved out to Seattle for a summer. And when I, I, again, I was kind of like reminiscent of my Europe time. I went out there, I did not, I'd never been there, did not know one person, and I was going to, you know, kind of just make it happen. Again, no cell phone, no. So it was an incredible opportunity and went out there, made new friends, new connections, and I, was, I made the decision, this is where I'm gonna be. I am going to move out there and when I came back after that summer, I, I decided I was going to try to find be go and try to be a teacher in Seattle. And what happened was um, I applied for positions. I actually had some interviews and flew out there, and I didn't get the positions. I didn't have um, enough experience or what they were looking for. And during that time, I was kind of just like really upset with myself. I was really upset too. I kind of was upset, upset, upset with them thinking, well, why don't you see the greatness about me? And I was kind of being a little self-centered. But what it did was it caused me to say, you know what, I, I need to embrace that failure. And I think about what can I do to improve? What can I uh, do to market myself? And instead of just saying, uh, oh, I need to, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. I thought maybe I need to look at myself and say, how do I grow and become more marketable um, out in Seattle? But um, I share that story with you is because I think sometimes in your life you think this is what my heart is set on, uh, is set on this is what I want to do, and it doesn't work out. But I think that's okay. It's like sometimes those things um, are life lessons and I think sometimes things happen for a reason, and we don't know it at the time. So, um, at, so I stayed in St. Louis and started working on my master's degree, and worked on my master's degree, and actually changed positions because the principal that I was at, I had in Webster Groves, he recruited me to come out to a different school district in Parkway, and went out there. And after a few years of teaching there, I was asked to consider being uh, the assistant principal. And I um, was a little hesitant to do that because I really loved what I was doing in the classroom, but I thought maybe I could impact students in a different way. So I um, became the assistant principal, and after serving assistant principal for three years, I then became the principal of that school. And, um, and what I learned in that situation, and what I learned throughout that, um, my career is that it's really important to think about how you can tri contribute without thinking about how it's going to be benefit to you, how it's going to benefit you, and I think that this is this is what education's about. I mean, it's about what you're going to do, and like almost like a personal sacrifice for the benefit of others. And I, um, so one of the things that I think about is that in your life, think about how you can have positive impact on someone else and really invest in helping them become a better person. And so one of the, I just want to share a story about a student that I had when I was out at the school, and his name was Raymond, and he was a kid who um, was always in my office. He was always in my office. He was sent there consistently. And um, when he was in third grade, and um, I was bound and determined to make sure that he had an experience that was going to change the trajectory of his life. So when he was in fourth grade, I, I had, uh, did a lot of work with his fourth grade teacher and um, was able to get him uh, kind of seeing the, not the deficit model of what's wrong with him, it's like what is something that, he, what, what are his strengths? And one of the things I also did was I kind of like personally adopted Raymond. 
Like I spent Saturday mornings picking him up and like taking him to museums. I would pick him up and say, okay, let's go, let's go do this. Or I'll go have you come play with my nephews or have you do this. And it's, it kind of was like, I had to make sure that I was investing in him so that way I could change his trajectory. Um, what was interesting is that Raymond, I, you could see almost, and he had an amazing teacher too, and you could see his progression change because you invested in him. And you also, th I thought about how um, we can build on his strengths. And so I, um, what I thought of, so what happened with Raymond is that by the time he got to fifth grade, other people perceived him differently as well. And you could see that he had kind of a sense of self. And um, one of the things that I, happened in fifth grade was by the end of fifth grade, there was, we had our fifth grade graduation and Raymond, who was always the kid who was in the office and had issues, he was this kid who, um, they, they actually voted him to give the speech at the fifth grade uh, graduation. And, um, and I'm not saying that I'm the only one responsible for that, but I, I was purposeful in trying to change his trajectory. And, and I think about what you can do personally to do that for others. And so I, uh, what was interesting about that day is that he got selected and um, he came to me uh, like a week before and he's like, I have nothing to wear. You know, and so I remember having to take him to Old Navy and getting him clothes for that. And he got up at, to, to go do the speech and he stood up and he just started crying in front of everyone. And it was like you saw this moment and his vulnerability. And, I, and I, what it was is like, but all the kids saw that too. And he's like, no, I know I need to move on. I need to... You know, I need to do this and he got up and said his speech and it was like that moment that I thought this is this is this investment in him is changing him for the rest of his life and it was fun to track him as he went through college uh, excuse me when he went through high school and I kind of lost track as uh, after college but um, I just think that you know we are so sometimes we're so in tune with looking at what's going to benefit us and I think about Think about ways that you can invest in others and, and make a change that is going to impact others in a positive way. So I just shared that little story about Raymond. Um, the last thing that I want just to talk to you a little bit about is having integrity. And if you were a student at Captain Elementary, you would probably heard me talk about integrity means that you do what's right even when no one's watching you. And so I don't think that, uh, I, I think that as adults, we need to take our own advice on that and uh, to take, listen to that as well. And so um, one of the, the, the most important, the, one of the people that I think had the most integrity was my mom. And I just can't tell you how incredible she was in terms of uh, being a constant in terms of support for our, our family. She was always the person who always provided that encouragement. Uh, that you needed. Uh, she was always the first person I called when something exciting was happening in life. And, um, and what was interesting is that she, late when she, in her early 70s, she was diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's, like a severe form of dementia. And, and um, so it was, it was really upsetting to have this person who was going, that I relied on in terms of the encouragement or being a model of integrity um, and always being a person who took the next step, even when it was difficult, was seeing her fade away. And so um, she actually passed away last September. And um, who's the person that I know has the most wisdom? And maybe I can steal some stuff from them. And so, but it, it was my mom. And, and when I had to give her eulogy, I was thinking about how do I give a eulogy that's going to be a lesson for the people who are in the audience? And so I thought, I want to share the things that were about her that I wanted other people to, to walk out of the church and, and feel like they can do something different. So what I want to share with you is that all these are things that I learned from her that I feel like I take on now as a person, and I'm wiser because of her, and I wanted to share those with you. Um, so that's her. So be purposeful and think of others first. Face challenges, but don't let, and, and you need to think about how you can overcome them, but don't let them define you. 
So the Seattle thing, I didn't say that I was a complete failure. I was going to say, okay, what do I just need to do differently? Practice random acts of kindness. Do something for someone else without thinking how you're going to get in return. One of the things that I think that she did was she was present. So when you're interacting with people, don't think about what you're going to say next. Think about what questions am I going to ask to get to learn more about them as a person. And then always work to be the, po the most positive person you know. And sometimes you have to fake that. <laughs> and, and it's okay to be upset sometimes. But I think that um, what I have found in my life is that even when I'm down about something, by really focusing, you know what, I'm going to be really positive about the situation or find the goodness out of the situation, it, it, it really turns my attitude around. So I share, I share these, I share these, um, these stories with you and I share these, you know, these words of wisdom to you because I think that as college students, soon to be college students, you're going to be faced with a lot of different challenges. I ask you to think about how do you embrace those challenges? How do you lean into them? Um, how do you be a person that uh, is going to uh, you know, have an impact on others or a cause or some type of um, change? And I, and I think about, think about your risk and think about how you can take steps that you feel are, is, is the direction that you want to go. Um, and, and it's good to have people that are influencing you and helping guide you. But don't let them be the people who or don't let the don't let them be the person that defines that for you. Take you know follow your heart, and and take those steps that you think are important for you. Because if I didn't, if I didn't take that step in buying a one way ticket to London, and and don't don't go home and tell your parents I said <laughs> Dr. Doherty said I have to go to London and I have to go sleep on a beach in Greece, uh, and I'll be all I'll, everything will be fine. Um, I, I just think that taking those calculated risks is okay because life's too short and it's important for you to, to do that and, and constantly be learning from those experiences. So um, it's my privilege to, I, and, I, and I also ultimately think the, the, my pathway led me here. I, I cannot believe how fortunate I am to be in Clayton and to be in with such an amazing group of professionals who serve an amazing group of students and um, I just feel privileged that I've even asked to be here to share my words of wisdom. So thank you for listening today.